Pamela, and today I am talking to Thomas Lau. He is an artist in Atlanta. He creates these amazing Easter eggs, if you can see behind me. I know we're gonna get a close up on these just wonderful hand painted eggs for Easter. And Thomas hides them in public parks around town. We're gonna to talk all about that and get into how he does his process. Thomas. What got you interested in creating these amazing, fantastic Easter eggs? So credit where credit is due, it definitely is from Yancey LaRochelle, who and, uh, had lunch at in 2012. And he basically came up with the idea of me painting wooden eggs. Okay, and you've been doing this, this is your 10th year? Yes. 10th That's anniversary. Right. Okay, so when you go and hide these Easter eggs on Easter morning, mm -hmm. you were telling me that you have kind of a process that you're going to do for the 10th anniversary. Mm -hmm. What is that? So. The ones on the background are going to be the AM uh, Easter eggs that I usually do. So for the last 10 years, there's a, in the morning when I hide them, first come, first serve, finding them. Uh, and for the 10th year, for the first time, I'm also going to do a small giveaway. So there's going to be, I think, like 48 eggs that I'm going to try to give away, depending on how many people, you know, show up for it. It's going to be either just, you know, first come, first serve like usual, or just like a rock, paper, scissors on who gets them. <laughs> so you buy these wooden eggs in bulk, mm -hmm. and then how do you go about creating the design? So the, uh, the process itself, the egg requires basically two uh, layers of base paint. Then I create the stencil for uh, the actual designs. I'll get to it in a minute. Uh, then I basically fill in them almost like an old cartoon style. So like the main colors first, then the detailing once it's dry, then the outline. Uh, then I put also a sealant of glitter for it. That so what do you want people to take away from this day when they go get their eggs? What besides are you, the egg? Well, besides <laughs> the egg, yes. I mean, you're doing this for free. This is yes. not something you're selling. So it, to me, this sounds like just you're giving a gift to the community. Yeah. Uh, free Art Friday is like this idea of every Friday, uh, some artists can, you know, drop something off and then uh, tell them, hey, Good luck finding it. First, uh, find us keepers, essentially. Um, that was the principle behind it, but for me, after 10 years, it's more like, you know, random act of kindness. Just like hiding it, first one to find it, uh, that's it. One of my friends from Airwatch like six, 10 years ago, uh, where basically they have hunted it for like six years now with their family uh, and their kids as well. Uh, similarly, another one is looking forward to it um, this year again. Uh, with their three-year-old, I believe it is, and they, uh, their uh, newborn as well. Again, it's I paint eggs, hide them in public park, first come, first serve. That's literally it. I mean, there's no, just a, a random act of kindness. Thomas, what kind of response have you gotten from the community? What feedback have you received? Um, that they apparently went outside as a couple with like a little Easter basket, right? Like, they had like a little cute oh, basket. Cute. So they were looking through the uh, park and supposedly a family was walking by and asking them like, you know, like, why are you carrying this basket? Why are you running from bush to bush? And so they explained the event and it turns out apparently this family was looking for an apartment um, in the area oh, nice. with their two kids. And so they decided, instead of looking for the apartment for now, to actually, you know, divert a little bit and then just go hunt eggs with them. <laughs> so one of my old coworkers from Airwatch also has hidden, I have hunted them for six years now. So with their kids now too, um, similarly, there was one that's actually looking forward to the 10th year. It's really become a tradition for them and probably yeah. for a lot of people in the community. Yeah. I know I am going to be joining in this year. I will be finding an Easter egg or two, or maybe hopefully more. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, how can people find out about you? Where are you on social media? Uh, and how can they find out when you're doing this? So I always announce the event uh, the day off, uh, because right now we still have a few days ahead of it. So I'm still looking for locations now that the weather is. I'm gonna use it as an excuse to walk my dogs in different parts, uh, but it's only on Instagram. Uh, and my tag is Inst Easter Bunny Assistant. Easter Bunny Assistant with, yeah. with underscores, underscores yeah. in between in each word. word. Yeah, Easter exactly. underscore bunny underscore assistant yeah. on Instagram. I don't take credit for the Easter eggs. So I'm just the assistant, sorry. Maybe <laughs> you might run into the Easter Bunny though, if you're lucky when you go hunting for these eggs, right? Yep. Thomas, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. I'm so happy to meet you, a true artist and uh, somebody who really just wants to give back to the community. It's a fun hobby. Right. I have no life. <laughs>
I can't, you know, I like to do some art and I will still listen to everything. And so my English teacher actually noticed that I doodle and she came up with this uh, agreement between me, which makes sense. And I'll explain in a minute because she was like, hey, as long as you are able to do your work in class and do your homework, you can draw as much and as little as you want in my class. You know, instead of having this little normal sheet of paper that I started with, I ended up going to like the art store and getting myself the one foot by two feet uh, piece of paper because now I could suddenly experiment with other designs. Right? So I just started drawing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And she was completely supportive of it to the point where she was like, asking questions in the class, right? And since the, what I call doodling, right? Which is a one by two foot uh, canvas, um, ended up basically relaxing me. So I ended up a lot of my art at home where my mom always was like, okay, bit weird that these dramatic patterns, but fine. My English teacher, definitely weird, but fine. And so over the years, I ended up painting some pieces on paper, but then I uh, went into uh, canvases. So right now, after my Easter eggs are done, which is taking you know, four or five months uh, out of the year, then I go back. It's basically an idea that came back. Again, I'm going to blame somebody else. <laughs> I don't take responsibility at all. Um, because my ex-wife and I went to St. Joseph's Dog Island Park in Florida, I think is the name. It's a, it's a mouthful, yeah. Um, so what I did is I actually collect seashells. They have like these big ones that are like big as a, um, whatever this normal seashell is. I think I have the pictures. I'll send you the pictures too. Um, and I basically ended up making just a giant seashell pattern on the beach. <laughs> and so like I combed the entire beach for the big shells and they, because since they were broken, right? I could uh, hook them with my hands and then just carry like 20 of them, just keep going, rinse, repeat, like a mile of beers collecting them. But I would have noticed is, the seashells, when you stack them, right, make an interesting pattern. And so that's one of the paintings that I'm doing right now. And I call it the uh, variation pattern because, a variance pattern, because basically the one that you see on my uh, website is basically one, but then is what if you do mirror it, right, it was the two, which I already painted. But in my usual madness, I decided instead of just doing a one by one, as I did in the stencil at high school, I decided to do a one by one foot canvas, then a two by two foot canvas, a three by three foot canvas and a four by four foot canvas. Uh, so the series that you're looking at is going to be basically a variation of one that's already finished, variation two that's almost finished because I'm going to finish the four by four foot canvas. A uh, variation of eight is done. That's what the first one I did, just wanted to see. But then I'm still missing the variation of three, four, six, nine, and 12. And that would be then basically done in maybe five years. And then I basically go back to uh, one of the patterns that Shishanta liked. Um, Honestly, if this ever, if this uh, actually ever, you know, finds Miss Shanta for whatever reason, please let uh, let her know. Yeah, that's the one. Yep, that's the one. That's Miss Shanta's pattern. Please let her know. I still have it. I just lost track of her after high school and after college, but I still have it. It is ready to be mailed to her at any given time. It's still, as far as I'm concerned, hers. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,